I, I'm a, a theorist, and so we right now we actually have uh, um, three major projects, uh, and one is uh, I work with a, a, a collaborator working on um, basically uh, uh, the behavior theory in for ionic fluid. We have been doing that for like uh, more than 10 years now. And the other one, that's a purely kind of a theoretical project. And, and then the other one is right now, is we're working on <coughs> nucleation and uh, apply uh, machine learning to, uh, to separation science in general, but uh, uh, chromatography in particular. And the other one is I work with, uh, and that actually is also a collaboration uh, within, some, uh, within the department and works with some AIMS lab people. Uh, and then the third one is we try to use uh, entangled photons to do high resolution or super resolution uh, imaging for chemical systems. So the idea behind it is we try to use entangled Raman photons to do that uh, 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 kind of uh, imaging. Hopefully we can get to the uh, like nanometer or tens of nanometer scale. And so that's the three major projects we have. So. And we are doing fundamental research. It's basically purely uh, curiosity-driven research. And for example, what we are doing now is the imaging, right? And we try to basically demonstrate there's a basic idea, how can you use these entangled photons to enhance the resolution? And in that sense, that's a pure, uh, in a sense, a quantum optics problem, right? But there's uh, many, many possible practical applications. You can image chemical reactions at the molecular level, and you can image cancer cells in single cell level. So that uh, once you build these kind of tools, and you could apply these kind of tools to many different kind of applications. Just think about the MR uh, kind of experiments. When people do this in back in the 40s, they just did it for fun. But now, I mean, MR is essentially everywhere, right? So, yeah. <clears throat> I have a long-term uh, uh, collaboration with uh, uh, Jake Patrick in, in the department and we have been working together for almost like the uh, past 20 years. And in general, I mean, uh, what we have, the, the attitude we have is uh, we have a particular uh, a scientific problem we want to solve. And you look at uh, either you can approach that problem from the theoretical side or you can approach that problem from the experimental side. So this is just different tools, in a sense, to try to understand a particular problem. So if you have this kind of philosophical understanding, and, and then this, this actually is, uh, is quite easy to work with. We pick up in this profession, I mean, start as a graduate student, right? So in that sense, in, in my mind, the students have to really love what you are doing, right? And then, of course, and uh, I mean, you have to be intellectually kind of gifted enough to be able to do this kind of stuff. And then the other is just work hard. And so there's no kind of shortcut. Uh, I, I think, I mean, just like I mean, you guys come here, you know what you need to do. So it's, it's not really, for me, it's, I, I mean, every time I, when I and meet with uh, uh, either the prospective graduate students or the one who want to work with me. I mean, that's what I'm going to say. I mean, there's no shortcut at all. It's straightforward. You do what you need to do, and, and then that's it. Right. You, you pick up this profession most time is because you like this kind of job. I mean, doing research is really a 24 hours, seven days a week, right? 
and especially for us, I mean, for you guys uh, as as uh, as experimentalists, you I mean, actually, you have to go to the lab, do the work. But for us, we have to think about what we are doing all the time. So I mean, you can do it in the office. You can do it at home. I mean, sometimes you do it in the shower. So. And you see, I mean, I, I think it's, uh, I mean, I don't really can think about this uh, as like, uh, uh, really like a, a kind of uh, a work push that somebody on you. It's like you can enjoy what you're doing, especially research aspect. But the teaching side sometimes to be a challenge. So. We have a really, really good research program, but at the same time, it's not extremely demanding in that sense. So, in a sense, I say that even not just for the faculty, actually also for the graduate students. And for the graduate students, in a sense, now we all have different learning curves. And then some maybe you are caught it for this top programs, you know, it's just extremely fierce competition. But for some of the uh, uh, people, and that may not be a good starting point. And so that, I mean, that's, so I was this do offer, a, I, I thought is a kind of a, a good uh, a top research program at the same time, and also gave you kind of a lot of freedom to work with. So, I mean, this is not easy. And uh, so, I mean, well, I don't know how kind of <laughs> much uh, I want to really elaborate this stuff, but, but that's, 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 that's how I see it.